What's going on, traders? Corey Smith here at CoreFX. Um, today is October 12th. It is a Friday. Markets are coming to a close here after another trading week here in October. Uh, I hope everybody's having a good week. I hope everybody's ready for the weekend. Chill out a little bit. I know it sucks the market's closed, but at least we get some time to rest, relax, um, analyze the charts, break them down while price isn't live and running away, um, and really just take some time to either rest and get some time away from the charts or maybe a little bit of both get into the charts, do some analysis, do some back testing, some demo trading, um, whatever it may be. But uh, another week down here, moving on to another new week here in October. Um, had a decent week here, news-wise, had a very strong sell-off in the equity markets, really around the world, but mainly in the U.S. Uh, had some really strong market sell-offs here. A um, number of different things going on. Federal Reserve um, hiking rates again and talking about continuing to hike them, the president disagreeing for the first time in decades with the um, outspokenly disagreeing with the Federal Reserve and Jerome Powell's approach. Um, so we're seeing a little bit of turmoil, but I don't think it's anything to worry about. I think the markets are still, there's still not a strong enough catalyst to really switch this bull market around. Um, but we are moving into a new trading week here. We got a pretty heavily packed news event week coming up here in the Forex markets. We got all kinds of employment reports, GDP reports, meeting minutes, governors, central bank governors speaking, CPI reports, uh, retail sales, all kinds of stuff going on this week. So really want to keep an eye out for news events and uh, make sure we have that calculated into our plan and our routine. Um, but again, if, if any of you guys have never seen these videos before, I'm going to go ahead and dive into the charts, cover a little bit of the news, a little bit of the top performing and underperforming currency pairs from last week, and then dive into the charts, all the US dollar crosses, all the indexes for each individual currency, SP 500, gold, oil, and then I'll go into my personal watch list for a week, the exact pairs I'm looking for setups on and why I'm looking for setups on them. Really just an all in one spot to get your analysis for the week ahead to see what's going on in the markets and um, what to watch for, what trades to be looking out for. So, uh, with no further ado, I'm going to go ahead and hop into the charts. All my returning viewers, I love you guys. Thank you very much for tuning back in. Throw a comment, throw a like. Anybody new, subscribe to the page so you can get notified when these new videos come out. Check out the website, corefxtrading.com. If you're looking to learn some uh, Forex trading, also I have a new live signal room where I share my professional trade alerts every week with you guys in the Telegram chat. Also do these webinars live. If that's something you're interested, check out the link in the bio below. But I'm going to go ahead and hop into the charts here now, guys. I will catch you in there. I appreciate you all. Thank you all. And I hope you enjoy this. What's going on, guys? Uh, diving into the charts here. Pulling up a quick little relative performance of this past week. What we've got going on in the pairs. As you guys can see, we got the yen. And then surprisingly, New Zealand and Aussie as the top three performers of the week. And we've got CAD, dollar, Swiss franc, the bottom three performers. Uh, this was a big, big, big sell-off in the U.S. equity markets and really the global markets this week. The worst sell-off um, the president, Donald Trump, has seen yet since presidency. Um, really the worst sell-off we've seen in a while. Um, but uh, that's the reasoning behind this yen strengthening and a lot behind the dollar weakening. Um, New Zealand Aussie strengthening doesn't really agree with that story fundamentally, but those those pairs have just been getting whacked for the past while. So they just uh, we just saw some bullish bouncing from them, some recovery, some retracements within that strong downtrend. But the big story of the week was the yen strength. Um, yen made some significant moves this week as it rode the back of the risk on theme in the markets with the equities down so low. So um, that's really what we had going on this week. We did have some news events. We had the GDP numbers out of Great Britain, which were soft, weaker than expectations. And we had the uh, U.S. dollars producer price index inflation numbers on the production side on par at 0.2% growth, modest growth. CPI was weaker. Um, this also can help contribute to the uh, weakness in the U.S. dollar as we have the Fed just hiked rates and they're calling for a more tightening and... Uh, President Trump came out and disagreed with their approach to that. Um, inflation looks like it's not picking up too hot, so so the rhetoric might cut back there from Jerome Powell and the central bank, but we'll have to wait and check it out and see how it goes. Um, next week on the pallet for news, starting the week Monday with some retail numbers and some CPI out of New Zealand and China, earnings out of Great Britain, CPI out of Great Britain, um, USD, we have the FOMC meeting minutes recap of the last meeting. 
Australian dollars unemployment reports. Yen has, uh, Kuroda speaking, the Bank of Japan governor. Retail sales out of Great Britain. Uh, economic summit in Europe. China's GDP, big market mover. Um, again, Governor Kuroda speaks. Canadian CPI and retail sales. Um, and then Governor Carney speaks out of um, Bank of England on Friday morning. So we have a pretty stacked news event week next week. And we have a, a lot of uh, sporadic news throughout the week. So it's not like we have a slow start or slow end to the week. We have a pretty steady flow of news throughout the week, which should generate some good trading opportunities. Taking it over to the charts here, starting with the US dollar Dixie chart. Um, we did have the dollar start the week up above this 95.50 strong support resistance level. We thought there was a possibility the dollar could continue higher as it stayed above this strong support. However, we did in fact sell off. Um, Monday we stayed sideways. Tuesday we started to break up above and out of this and then quickly reversed. Wednesday, Thursday reversed. Friday, a little bit of a bounce we're seeing here now off this 95 support level. Also hugging the, two, the 20 SMA as support as well. Uh, but market structure speaking, we did have a break of structure with this bullish move a couple weeks ago. Setting a higher high, breaking structure, breaking this resistance. We've now pulled back what could be a higher low. We could find this support here on 95 and give us enough momentum to push higher. So we could be watching for a bullish US dollar this week. Taking it over to the euro. Um, again, we were expecting the opposite with the euro. We we're expecting this lower low came down here. We we're expecting this resistance to hold and price to continue lower. But it did not do that. It did, in fact, reverse back up above this 110.50. 50 SMA has held price for now, but we are right back into this strong zone where, um, you know, it's an indecision zone. Price could bounce, price could break. So we'll have to keep an eye on it, but we are back above that 1050. Um, so we'll have to see what price does here. Another one where you kind of have to wait and see what price does. This did set a lower low structure breaking with this move down here. Pull back. 50 SMA held. Could be a lower high. We could get another push lower here next week with the euro. Japanese yen, this is that explosive move that we saw this week, right? So we opened the week gap tire and then just continued to push from there. We're now seeing some resistance. Price is struggling at around this 85.50 level here. The 50 SMA is holding. This could be a lower high after this strong lower low. We could see price now rebound off of here and continue the downtrend. As you can see, we have been in a downtrend. Lower lows, lower highs. Price moving top left, to bottom right. Um, so perfect structure downtrend. And we're still below the 50 SMA, so we do still show this downward support, uh, this downward um, uh, momentum, sorry. So we'll be watching for this price now to continue the downside, but if we have a sell-off continuing next week in the equity markets, I do think we could see continued strength out of the yen. Pound, pretty much done exactly what we expected. Uh, we were setting these higher highs, higher lows, pulled back for a higher low this past week. We were expecting another higher high push. And we have pushed up to at least retest this prior higher high. So um, we didn't set a new higher high, but we're waiting for price to now pull back maybe again. And then we'll get that push to come up and set our next higher high. Um, but pound, we're still bullish, right? We're above the 50 SMA. Price is setting higher highs and higher lows. We're following this downward, uh, this upward trend line on the bottom. So um, really all in all, we are definitely still bullish to pound. We might see a little bit of a pullback here, but uh, just more of an opportunity to look for buys and longs on the pound pairs as we did get a little bit of a pullback that we needed. CAD, a uh, little bit of a tricky pair, nothing really clear. We broke this channel three times now. Have a little bit of a, another trend line that could be forming here. Um, but price is now below the 50 SMA. It sold off pretty strong the last two weeks. We thought we were going to get a bounce this week. Did not happen. The bottom of the channel broke, fell through. So we'll see now if this 75.50 support's able to hold and if price bounces. If not, we could expect to see a weaker CAD continuing here moving into the next couple weeks. Swiss franc is kind of just based around above this weekly support zone that we saw price sold off to very hard and then has just been bouncing around really. Uh, started to bounce off it and quickly sold off again. So it's really just chopping around down here. We got to wait to see if this support is going to hold or if price is going to be able to break through this weekly support and potentially give us a nice push to the downside. Australian dollar still moving in this downtrend, though this week we did get a rally. As you guys saw, Aussie New Zealand, two of the top forming pairs this week. Um, this is it right here. This bounce off this weekly support, bounce off this lower low. Price is just pulling back. Um, it did move lower as we expected up here. Now we can expect to try to find the same kind of deal. 
look for the next price to find resistance, look for it to continue downward, and try to catch that trend moving on its next push lower. New Zealand dollar, as you guys can see here, um, we've been in this downward trend, lower lows, lower highs, lower low, lower high, set this lower low, and we've now pulled back. As you can see here, you can see the last week, we've pulled back up. Weekly, you can't really see too much what's going on. But we broke lower here and now pulling back to retest this resistance. Um, definitely still a bear for New Zealand dollar. Just wait for the right opportunities. We got this nice pullback coming now off this rally this week. Now next week, we can start looking for shorts again to get back into that downtrend. All right, that takes us over to the S&P 500. Here's the massive sell-off that we saw this week, the past few days. Strong sell-off Wednesday. Very, very, very strong sell-off Wednesday. Then we had a back-to-back -back strong sell-off again yesterday, Thursday. This 200 SMA, which has been holding as support for a while now, price just blew right through it. This blue weekly trend line, price just blew right through it. Um, ended up closing all the way down here, but we did recover a lot of those losses today from yesterday. We'll see how the day ends up closing here shortly. But um, all in all, we did see price recover some of those gains. So um, we... Had a strong sell-off, ending the week with a little bit of a rally to that sell-off. Still a down day, but um, recovering some of the intraday losses that we were seeing. Recovered a lot of the losses from yesterday. So we'll have to keep an eye on the developing story with this equity markets um, sell-off and see how that continues. Gold, we saw a nice rally. Broke up above this strong resistance level here in this red box. As you can see, price broke up and above it with this very strong bullish jump on Thursday. This, again, similar to the yen, this is risk off and moves. This is people, um, you know, risk off, I'm sorry. This is people feeling the, the scared in the market. They're feeling this market going under. They're getting scared. They're switching their money from stocks and uh, riskier assets over into the safe haven assets and the less risk assets like gold, like the Japanese yen, like bonds, things of that nature. Um, so gold has seen a jump. Broke and closed up above this level, up above the 50 SMA. 20s crossing above the 50. Broke structure, set a new higher high. I am no longer a bear in gold for now. I'm back to looking at long opportunities until price tells us something differently. And then we've got oil sold off strong this week. Another contributor to the Canadian dollar's weakness. As you can see, we've sold off. 70 is acting as support again, this 70 region. So we'll see what price does here. Still above the 50 SMA, still higher high, pulling back to a higher low. So we could easily see a bounce here. But as of right now, we had a significant sell-off Wednesday, Thursday, and price is now bouncing off this support here on Friday. So we'll have to wait and see what price does at this level of $70 a barrel. Taking us over to the US dollar crosses, we have the euro up first. This very strong 115.50 level here on this weekly level uh, with the blue um, line here with the gray box is a significant weekly zone. We were trading below it. Thought we might have stayed there and sold off, but this week we traded back up above it. Strong bullish bounce off of here. However, structurally speaking and um, moving averages and all my trend analysis shows we set a lower low with this push down here. Have now pulled back, setting what could be a lower high, respecting this resistance, respecting 50 SMA. We could see this pull back if we throw a Fibonacci level from this prior move down. You can see we're right around the 382 to 50 Fibonacci retracement level, a significant level for price to continue. So what we could potentially see this week out of the euro is a pullback to retest this zone, and then maybe we get that next push lower, right? The next lower low could be our next move here out of the euro dollar. Pound dollar moved up pretty nicely as we expected off this higher low. Bounced off this trend line, bounced off 50 SMA, bullish engulfing, pulled back, hit there. Moved up um, last week and then this week continued to move higher. We're now getting a bearish engulfing bounce off of this resistance after this move. Higher high holding. So we're going to have to wait and see what price does here. Structures res being respected. So um, no clear sign of a new higher high coming. But I do expect a little bit of a pullback before we get that strength to return back to the pound. Dollar CAD. Broke this downward trend line. Broke what I thought was going to hold here as resistance with these tweezer top back-to-back -back shooting star upper wick candles. Big bullish engulfing candle bounce here. Broke this trend line, broke, broke this resistance, broke 50 SMA. Could be in jeopardy of reversing trend here, right? Um, so we're going to have to wait and see if this resistance on this red line is broken. 50 SMA is already broken if price can continue up and above it 
Then we will have a trend reversal here in the dollar CAD. Dollar yen, super strong sell off this week. As we saw, yeah, uh, dollar was one of the weakest pairs this week. Yen was one of the strongest. That shows why we have all this bearish momentum. Now pulled back to the 50 SMA. Spinning top candle yesterday. Looks like we're closing with a, day, with a doji candle today. Both indecision candles on an area of support at this 112 support level. Also tapped the 50 SMA and respected it. And you could say somewhat near this daily trend line as well. Um, so keep an eye on this pair. Uh, we'll have to see if this support holds or if that yen continues to downfall, to push higher next week. Um, dollar Swiss franc, pretty ugly price action here. We got upper wicks rejecting the supply zone, pulled back, lower wick rejecting this uh, support zone. Getting a little bit of a bullish engulfing close here today on Friday, but really nothing nice out of this pair. I'd like to see something one way or another, whether it's a break of this level here and rolling over. Or if price comes and is able to break up above these wicks up here. Um, all in all, nothing to nothing to really run after with this pair right here. Just keep an eye on it. Aussie dollar still in this downtrend. We're now basing, as you can see, taking it to a smaller time frame. You can see this uh, price just basically consolidating under this resistance level here. Um, so keep an eye on this pair. Pressure still remains to the downside. Still in a very strong downtrend. But we did get some nice bullish engulfing presence off this support here. We did get a nice bounce there. As you can see, a little bit of a sloppy double bottom pattern here. Um, but price is initially bouncing pretty strong off that support. And New Zealand dollar, pretty similar story. Down here basing after setting a strong lower low. Got a big bullish pop on Thursday. Has pushed higher. Now hitting weekly resistance. Um, so we'll see how price reacts. But we still do have some more room for a pullback. Price could pull back up to here. Catch up to this uh, 50 SMA. Throw a trend line on there that price could be hitting and we could get a little bit of a deeper pullback here before we want to start looking for shorts. First pair on my watch list now is going to be the Swiss franc Japanese yen. Um, we have now broken structure. This was the higher high, higher low, higher high, complete sell off, broke the higher low, lower low, broke the 50 SMA, broke structure, broke moving averages, 20s rolling over, we're now below moving averages. So I'm going to look for price to rally back up to this 114. And then look for short opportunities to catch that next push down to potentially this daily trend line area here. Pound Aussie, um, nice strong bullish moves the past few months. Pushed up and above this weekly strong resistance. Pulled back, bounced again, pulled back. Now looking for another bounce off this level here to try to catch that next push higher. Pound Swiss franc, similar story only. We're hitting the 50 SMA, hitting strong resistance and hitting... Um, this bearish engulfing pattern here as well. So we really have a little bit of time to wait for this to pull back. We got a nice rounding bottom pattern here showing us this reversal. Price broke above the 50 SMA, broke above structure, setting new higher highs, continuing. Um, and as you can see, we're now just waiting for a pullback back to an area of support to then try to look for that next long. Pound New Zealand, similar to Pound Aussie, set a higher high. Price been basing around up there, starting to sell off. Looking for a pullback here. This pair is still very far from the moving averages, still in a very strong bullish market. So we would like a little bit deeper of a pullback here, give us some more opportunity. Maybe not quite all the way to this box I have here as a reversal zone, but maybe we come down to this 2010 and uh, look for long opportunities off of there. Pound CAD, uh, broke above a nice strong level, broke this trend line, broke a 50 SMA, 20 SMA. Price is now in an uptrend. Broke structure, set this higher high, pulling back now. We could see price pull back to maybe here, retest this trend line before we then make the next push higher, right? So another one on our radar watching for opportunities for Euro pound, very strong sell off, broke all through 200 SMAs, 50 SMA, 20 SMA, weekly support, daily support, and is now pulled back two days. Um, we're going to look for maybe again, a deeper pullback here, look for price to recover a little bit, find some resistance, and then look for that short opportunity to try to catch that next push lower. Aussie CAD, another pair I really, really like here. Uh, in, a, in a downtrend, setting lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs. Again, we had this rally in Aussie this week, weakness in CAD this week. So price did sell off pretty strong or rally pretty strong in this pair. Um, we're now looking for this resistance to be found on the 50 SMA on prior structure and looking to see if we can catch that next, uh, sorry, 20 SMA and 50 Fibonacci. Trying to catch that next downside move. Um, out of this pair very similar story here on New Zealand CAD. So we're in a trend channel price 
pushed lower, pulled back. We're in a 50 SMA here to uh, 50 Fibonacci here too on the 20 SMA on prior structure. This is a great opportunity to now look for short opportunities off of this pullback to see if we can catch some kind of uh, resistance here and show us that price is ready to move lower. CAD Swiss franc, another one in an uptrend, just had a strong higher high, now pulled back above the 50 SMA, above the 20 SMA, above the 200 SMA. Um, price is now retested and bounced off the 200 SMA. So we will be looking for um, some opportunities to buy this pair to catch that next momentous push higher, to catch that next strong bullish wave and try to catch some pips on riding the next move. All right. So that guys, that does it for what I'm watching this week for the dollar crosses, my indexes, everything else I cover here. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch these videos. I hope you get something out of them. I hope you enjoy it. If you like what you see, check out my page, like the video, throw a comment, subscribe so you're notified when there's more videos that come up. Um, and if you guys are interested in learning more about trading, check out my website, corefxtrading.com. Links below have a uh, signal room every month as well where we share our live trade alerts. Thank you guys. I hope you uh, enjoy these videos. I hope you have a great weekend and I'll see you next week.